But the other thing I heard was that particular wardrobe department, like, don't be in there alone. I was like, why? Because sometimes, you know, you just rush in. And most times when you come, especially in the mornings, it's very crowded because there's a lot of people. But if you do a night shoot, right, then sometimes like you go there and return your clothes in the middle of the night and people are like, don't go there alone because there's a lot of weird stuff lurking. I'm like, lurking where? Like, between the clothes. Obviously between the quotes, right? Because that's all that's in there. So, oh, so these stories make me very like. Mm. Is there anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. All right. So you and I, I mean, uh, we spent quite a, a bit of time, obviously, at MediaCorp at the yeah. old Caldecott building. And one of the questions that a lot of people always ask me is that, you know, um, was it haunted? Was, uh, you know, that big building on top of the hill, was it haunted? And obviously coming from the radio side, right, there were a lot of stories coming from the studios and stuff like that. Yeah. But you spent a lot of time actually on the other side, the, the TV studios, because you were always involved uh, in front of the camera. So in your experience, while we were at Caldecott, did you hear any stories or did you experience anything in particular? I, you know, like everyone talks about the radio side. So I've been to a radio side at that point, more interviews and stuff, right? Um, but yeah, the TV side, you know, the wardrobe, the old wardrobe where the basketball used to be. So ugh, just talking about it, I get chill. So like, like I would, I'm actually not, even though like I'm, I'm like chicken when it comes to like the stories, you know, like whatever you just told me is like a bit GT when you tell me things like that. When I'm actually in a spooky situation, like, I'm not afraid to like, like, like we filmed, for example, like at secondary schools or primary schools in the middle of the night. Because when I was filming this show called First Class, you know, obviously they would need the school back in the day. So as teachers and all that, we would film at night. And I never felt spooked, you know, when I needed to go to the ladies, I would just go. And a lot of the cast was male. So I would just go and of it. And then when I would come back, right, the AP, the assistant would say, huh, you went on your own? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I just went to... You know, she's like, oh, uh, next time you can ask me to go with you. I was like, mm, okay, why? You know, and then like I found out that a lot of people said schools are haunted. So the same for Media Corp. I heard all these stories, but I never personally felt spooked until I did. Until I felt it, literally. So I heard many stories like, so at the basketball court, um, just behind the basketball court was the old wardrobe department. There were two wardrobe departments. So there was the drama wardrobe department. And I didn't do a lot of drama. So usually I was on the middle section, which is the... The midsection of the whole building is the, the variety wardrobe, right? Which is where radio, the radio um, station used to be. But the drama side is very isolated because it's all the way in one corner and there's a basketball court in front of it, which is kind of weird. And then there was this railing, right? So there was this railing where people would sometimes, we would just carry our clothes and just like, it wasn't, it was too wide. It wasn't the kind you could hang stuff on. It was just like a rail that you could sit on it. So we just double on the rail. And then I heard weird stories like, like, don't leave your stuff on the rail because someone said when they left their, like, the bag on the rail or something, it, the next thing they came back, it got, it kind of like the handle was on the rail and it was kind of like stuck there. The was handle like, oh. was stuck on the rail. Usually, yeah, like, the rail is too wide for the handle to even fit on top, but suddenly now it had been crammed into the thing? No, like, okay, okay. imagine like the rail's like this, right? And then for a bag to be, like, maybe if you have a bag that has a buckle that can be buckled in, you kind of fit in, but this bag had no buckle, but suddenly the bag was stuck there because... How did it get in? I don't know! So I, I I didn't see this, but this is something that another artist told me. I was like, oh! And then uh, another time, like, oh, the other thing I heard was that particular wardrobe department, like, don't be in there alone. I was like, why? Because sometimes, you know, you just rush in. And most times when you come, especially in the mornings, it's very crowded because there's a lot of people. But if you do a night shoot, Right, then sometimes like, you go there and return your clothes in the middle of the night and people are like, don't go there alone because there's a lot of weird stuff lurking. I'm like, lurking where? Like between the clothes. Obviously between the clothes, right? Because that's all that's in there. So, oh, so these stories make me very like, mm. um, I, would, I would just try not to think about it. The other one was the corridor where the wardrobe, the variety wardrobe was. So this was in the middle of the building. Right, so sometimes when it's raining, usually I just walk on the outside, but when it's raining, you walk through this really narrow corridor to get the makeup room, and that corridor somehow always gave me the chills. I don't know, I felt like there were things that were going to pop out. It could be my overactive imagination, but that was, yeah, the old Mediacorp feels for me. 
What what kind of feeling was this? I mean, did you feel like something was watching you? Did you think like you were walking towards something? You know, and you know, what were and usually what was your frame of mind? Would you be already thinking of creepy things, or you just suddenly get this feeling out of nowhere, the tingles while you're walking down? Usually, that corridor, I would be rushing, mm. right? Because usually, it would be rushing from there to like my car, wherever to get out, right? And yeah. So I wouldn't be thinking about it, but yeah, I would suddenly get the chills. Yeah. Okay. Very like weird feeling like there's someone either behind or in front of me or watching me or like gonna pop out some I don't know. It's just like mm. yeah. That whole area did like yeah, not great. I've had so many people ask me as well because it was this really old building on the hill. Like, is it haunted? And I always said no, more because I guess I wanted to believe no. <laughs> Do you feel haunted, Tim? Um. I did feel uncomfortable at times, but I think having been there for so long, you kind of just got used to it after a while. It was really funny when you talked about how that the bag just magically, the loop suddenly just got intertwined with the railing yeah. and no one could really explain that. It just kind of reminded me of this story that I heard from the uh, the radio building. And obviously you spent some time in radio yeah. as well. You're very familiar with how the soundproofing works, right? So when a long time ago, this was obviously before my time, and it was back when the studios were in the basement of the radio yeah. building. So yeah. all the way at the end, right, uh, there was this studio. I'm not sure if it was a Class 95 studio or it was uh, a Symphony 92.4 studio at the time. But you know when they're, uh, when they're soundproofing, right, they usually put two panes of glass, yeah. you know, so you have an airlock in between, right? Yeah. So it's like a, it's a window, but it's made of two panes of glass, right? So the story I heard was that one day, uh, MCR, the engineering, came in. And lo and behold, they found CDs stuck in the middle of the two gla- panes of glass, oh. right? And they were like, they couldn't understand how it was because number one, these panes of glass, they've been sealed like that for the longest time. And it's not like you can just unscrew the the, the glass and take it out. They've been there for so long, the, the rivets and all that are all like worn down and there were absolutely no marks at all, right? So how did you get CDs stuck in the middle of these two panes of glass? In the end, what I heard is that they actually had to smash the glass just to take the CDs out. See, this is like the railing story. Yeah. And like, how would the bag suddenly be on a rail? The, and the rail is fastened to the ground and the bag had no clips. It's just a normal, like, tote bag. Mm. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So aside from your time at MediaCorp, have you had any other weird encounters that you just can't explain? I had two. Yeah. I had two weird encounters that I... Thankfully, I mean, well, I'll, I'll share one first. So one was... I was with my then boyfriend and we were rollerblading around the Siglap area, hmm. right? And then one, and then we passed by this house and he never mentioned he had a relative here, but he was like, oh, this is like my uncle's house. I was like, oh, okay. And it was one of those really old, um, like really old school houses, probably like just post the Kampong era when they just built these like bungalow, small bungalow houses. Yeah. So he went in and then his uncle was like, we said hi and all that. And then his cousin was like, oh, you know, help yourself to drinks. Hmm. So it's like, you know, just go to the kitchen and just uh, pick what you want. Like, what do you guys want to drink? You'll just help yourself. So I went to the fridge and I opened it and I stood there staring. I was like, mm, should I have like G? Should I have like... And then suddenly, right, he slams the fridge door shut and then he's like, let's go. I'm like, huh, let's go. He's like, let's go now. I was like, that's kind of rude. We just got here. Like, he's like, no, no, let's go now, now. Hmm. Hmm. And I was like, okay. I mean, I thought that was kind of rude, but I was like, okay. Then we, he just like slammed the fridge door and, and then ushered me out. And then I just kind of like nary, like waved to the uncle. I was like, oh, bye uncle, thanks. Then I was a bit annoyed. And then we, and then he didn't even let me stay in the house. He was like, let's go. And he made me get out of the house. Right. To sit on like curb to put our skates back on. And I was like, what's okay. your problem? Yeah. So then he was like, I'll tell you later. So he's like, just hurry up and put on your skates. So we put on his skates, and when we had skated a good distance away, he was like, didn't you feel it? Didn't you see it? I'm like, what? He was like, when you opened the fridge door, there was this thing that was like looming over it. Like, yeah, I was like, oh. Wait, 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 wait. So there was something in the fridge or there was something outside of the fridge? It was like, I opened the fridge door and it was like next to the fridge. And it was like looming over me. And that's why he stood behind me, slammed the fridge door shut and said, let's go now. Did he describe what the figure looked like? He, I, I think he didn't dare to because he was scared to tell me, but he was like, there was definitely something there. He said, I said, how do you know? Why do you, he said, didn't you feel a chill? Plus, mm. didn't you see it? I'm like, I didn't see anything and I didn't feel anything. Wow. But that gave me the chills for years. And like, I mean, we've since, you know, broken up and lost contact. But yeah. I, I, I guess I would like to ask him if I ever saw him again, like which house that was. 
Yeah, do you remember where in Siglap this was, uh, you know, around? Roughly, roughly I do because my cousin stays around there. So I'm, I'm always, I've always been skating and cycling in the area, like, you know. Okay. But this is a, this is a landed property house. It's a landed property house in Siglap, right. but it's not, I can't remember the exact lane. Road. That was okay. The, exact road. I was, the east of Singapore has a lot of stories attached to it as well. Hey, <laughs> And, but like it was definitely yeah it's definitely in Sigla and I was I was 15 years old so it's been a long okay. time but I'm really curious and this was in the middle of the day right or evening yeah like 4 p.m or something like in the middle of the afternoon we were just skating like for fun mm. big house mm, no big ground but the house itself wasn't huge it's one of those okay. old like you know smallish size house actually okay. and did How... you have a... sorry what was that I mean, it's small by Siglot standards, I guess. Not, not mm. huge. Okay. And did you uh, ever, like, follow up with uh, your boyfriend at the time when he told you? Did you ask, like, does this place have a history? And how pissed must you have been uh, at him for actually bringing you into a haunted house, right? <laughs> no, well, I, I didn't ever follow up. I think at the time I was still scared. So mm. it's one of those, you know how you have, like, you keep certain memories. And it's one of those memories that I've always thought about. But like yeah. I said, we've lost contact, so... This is like a long time ago. Um, mm. I never asked him after that. I wasn't pissed with him because I was pissed at the time because I thought he was being rude. But yeah. I, I'm sure he didn't mean for that to happen as well. And it was it was just really, really freaky. You yeah. know, it felt freaky to me also because he never told me he had an uncle who stayed there, even though my cousin has stayed there all her life. Mm. And never, it's almost like he felt drawn to go in. That's what freaked me out as well. You know, because he's not a sociable guy. Like, hey, let's go visit this person or that person. But he suddenly was like, Oh, my uncle stays here. Let's go visit. I was like, huh? Okay. Jada. The whole thing just felt freaky. What, what if... What if the uncle that you saw wasn't actually there? Oh, my God. Tim! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he never mentioned he had a relative there before. He walks oh. in. And then he, you know, opens a fridge. And then he starts seeing something there. I feel like I need to say he'll marry now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I love this. St- I, I love the concept of a, of a guardian ghost that protects a fridge. You know, I feel like this is something I would tell my child to prevent him from snacking in the middle of the night. <laughs> Things like the boogeyman that like parents tell their kids just to make sure, yeah, like they don't like anyhow open the fridge and like raid it and eat yeah. your house. Don't get the ice cream. The hantu will get you. <laughs> what did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions.